my dear brothers and sisters um welcome to this monday message again and uh, from today we will be starting a new series within the monday message so we have called it the why series answering the why's of our christian life and discipleship we have a lot of questions why 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 so today we will start with one of the why's why go to church now this question is coming from a few believers heart why go to church now when we discuss this question why go to church it means it is coming from good people so for example someone might might say i believe in god i love god i keep god's commandments and um uh, i can pray in my heart i can make pray in my home why should i go to church and attend the mass or pray why can't i pray in my my own heart or in my own home is is it absolutely necessary that i go to church is it only by going to church that my faith can be fully exercised these are the questions um people ask and sometimes parents are confronted with that same question from your children why go to church now how do we answer them or how do we answer this question in the first place um those who ask this question should i go to church why go to church we need to understand that they are referring to a passage in the gospel especially when jesus was talking about the hypocrisy of people he said when you pray go to your room close your door and pray to your father in heaven and he who sees in secret will reward you so these people are citing it and they say so jesus said go to the room and show no one that you are praying so pray and then father will reward you so if that's what jesus said then why should we go to church now the answer to that question is that there is a distinction between worship and prayer there's a distinction between public worship and personal prayer now if you're talking about personal prayer it is true you go to your room close your door and pray to your father in heaven and then you will be doing very well but on the other hand if you are talking about worshiping god i mean public worship of god then as we know it is taking place in a designated place it is not in your home so the public worship is happening in a place selected or chosen by god in the community and that's where public worship is happening so make that distinction here as part of our devotion and faith our prayer life consists of two things one is our personal devotions personal prayers so for your personal prayer you don't need to go to church but if you go to church and do your personal prayer that's no sin in it but you don't necessarily need to go there just as jesus our blessed lord uh, as we see in the bible he went up to the mountains in the early mornings or sometimes late at night and prayed to the father in heaven so that was his personal prayer time but the lord also had a public worship so the bible testifies to that that even um with mother mary and joseph it was customary for that whole family to go to go to the jerusalem temple once a year so that's when at the age of 
um, 12 Jesus was lost in the temple for three days so every year they used to go and not only that even as a as a grown-up man Jesus used to go to temple and he used to teach there and he used to uh, pray there so if going to temple as a place of worship was not essential then Jesus would not have gone there the Holy Family would not have gone there they would have just chosen to sit at home and worship at home but on the other hand Bible has strong evidence that Jesus the Holy Family the Apostles after the Pentecost they even went to the Jerusalem temple and prayed until the destruction of the temple the Apostles even prayed in Jerusalem temple so think about it Jesus when he was found after being lost three days after being lost he answered um, mother Mary why did you search for me should I not be concerned about my father's business so that means Jesus was referring to the temple as his father's house so he was um, giving importance to that place anyway and remember um, think about that act of Jesus driving out people um, those who were doing business in the temple what did he tell them how could you make my father's house a den of robbers so he referred to the Jerusalem temple as his father's house so that means that physical building had an importance that gathering place had an important that place where sacrifices used to take place had an important so Jesus and the Apostles and Holy uh, Family showed us this example that on one hand you have your personal prayer life which is done in secret on the other hand as a uh, as part of God's people the chosen race you also are part of a community and a family and therefore you have a uh, what do you call a public worship of your God so going to church uh, for Holy Mass Eucharist or any other celebration is part of a public worship and therefore uh, it is necessary so so we have to essentially make that distinction personal devotions personal prayers and uh, public worship these two are integral part of our faith life so we need to respect it and we need to do that and that's what the Apostle says and going through the Acts of the Apostles I've seen this as well there are times you see the Apostles Peter and John for example when they cured that uh, lame man who was begging at the temple gate they were going for their three o'clock prayer in the afternoon at the time of prayer they were going into the temple to pray so that means they did it and um, I would also I was also surprised sometime back to read it that even after being filled with the Holy Spirit and being commissioned as an, as an apostle and preaching all over the world there's a time when Paul came back to the Jerusalem temple and shaved off his hair because he had a vow to fulfill so those rituals and those um, acts of worship uh, were all taken seriously even by someone like St. Paul who had a lot of wisdom and knowledge in all the world so um, we cannot neglect that aspect of the public worship of our God that's very important as a family now when you go to church I want you to uh, understand that you're going to your uh, extended family of course your immediate family is your the family that you live but your parish community or church community is your extended family so when you worship um, in the church it's not a different place not a strange place you are joining with the rest of your family it's a family coming together and you're worshiping your God just as um, the culmination of all this will be in heaven where 
the whole world will come together and it's, it will become a whole family of, of multitudes worshipping God. So that's how um, Christian life and faith is progressing. And you cannot just limit your faith practice to yourself. You cannot just say, no, I'll practice at home. No, that's not the example Jesus showed us. That's not the example uh, church fathers showed us, the apostles showed us. They all had a different uh, example to show us. Now, I spoke about Peter, uh, the apostles going to temple for public worship and prayer. And what about their personal prayer time? They also had a personal prayer time. If you read in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, you have uh, that example of Peter going up to the terrace of the house. He was praying, uh, staying, sorry, and then he spent time in prayer, their personal prayer time, so which no one uh, needed to know. That's why he went up to the terrace to a quiet time with God and prayed, so which he did. So, so let that word of Jesus go to your room and close your door and pray to the Father, not confuse you. And let no one take that as an excuse for not going to church, you know, so that's very important. Um, so going to church. Now, another argument that I've heard people talking about, you know, people who don't want to go to church, they talk about church is full of hypocrites. These people, you know, they do this, they do that, and they edge, they go to church. I don't want to go there because it's full of hypocrites. Wow. I think that itself is hypocrisy. A person who says church is full of hypocrites, they go to church, come back and they do differently, so I don't want to go to church. I've just finished judging people. You've just finished finding out a reason, an excuse for not going to church. Look, will anyone who says church is full of hypocrites, so I don't want to go, will you apply the same principle everywhere? A train that is full of passengers, I don't want to get on board a train because the whole train is full of hypocrites. Will anyone say that? I don't want to go to a shopping center full of hypocrites. I don't want to eat in a restaurant because full of hypocrites. I don't want to go to the cinema. The cinema is full of hypocrites. I don't see them doing, applying that same principle there. So it's selective. So you don't want to go to church, so you find a reason. Church is full of hypocrites. Now, let me tell you, even if the church is full of hypocrites, that's your problem. Even if church is full of people who do just the opposite to their faith after they finish the worship, what prevents you from not going to church? You can be different. You can be a genuine person, go to church and pray and come back and live out that faith and show everyone an example. So is it by sitting at home that you make a difference? No. Yes, think about it. Now I just want to tell you that, look, people who go to church, go to church not because they are perfect. Please don't expect the churchgoers to be perfect. Just because you go to church or oh, coming back, you need to be perfect in everything. You can't be angry. You just went to church, so you get angry. And don't demand that kind of a perfection from anyone who goes to church. In my humble opinion, me or anyone who goes to church, we are going to church not because we are holy. We are not going to church because we are perfect. We are going to church because we know it deep in our hearts that we are imperfect. We need God's grace. We need God's mercy. And without his help, we cannot move on in this life. 
So to ask for that grace only we are going to church, how does it become hypocrisy? Even if after the church, some of our weaknesses are still manifested in our personality, still how does it disqualify us from going to church? Think about the parable Jesus said about the Pharisee praying in the temple and the tax collector praying in the temple. What did the Pharisee do? He went to the front pew, sat there and loudly prayed, Lord, I'm not like him who is sitting just at the back of me. He's a tax collector, but I've kept all your commandments. Jesus mentioned about the other man. He said, Lord, I'm not even worthy to come here. The Lord said, he went justified than him. So where is the hypocrisy? Hypocrisy is in a person who says everyone else is a sinner. They only go to church. They come back and they commit sins. Therefore, I'm not going to church. You are the hypocrite. Do you get the point? Because you judge everyone and you think like that Pharisee. Everyone else is a tax collector. Everyone else is, um, you know, is committing sins. I alone am not like them, so I don't want to associate with them. Who is a hypocrite? Think about it. So, if that is your reason for not going to church, then you need to know that you have found a lame excuse, really a lame excuse. So, brother uh, and sister, do not hold on to those kind of opinions. And if you yourself have been confronted with by your family, you go to church and you come back, is it the way you behave? Well, I'm telling you, if you have a chance of changing your behavior, please change it. But if you are still faced with your weaknesses, don't let these judgments prevent you from doing what you have to do. Because you and me, we need God. We need to go to church, not because we are holy, but we hope to become holy gradually by the grace of God. And we need God's mercy. So that's why we go to church. Now, going to church also has a testimony value, a witnessing. Look, as Christians, we are all supposed to be witnesses to Jesus. So going to church is, is a way of witnessing to our faith. Look, if everyone is who is a Christian, you only practice your faith at home, inside your closed door. How will that word of God be fulfilled when Jesus said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. A light cannot be lit and then hidden under a bushel. It has to be lit up on a mountain. If you are only practicing your faith within the confinements of your home, how will you effectively become the salt of the earth? How will you affect, how will you affect, how will you impact the human culture with your faith? Impossible. So there needs to be a public witnessing of your faith. So when a family or when a person goes to church, know that you're going as a witness to Christ. You're witnessing to the resurrection of Christ on a Sunday when you go to church. You are proclaiming to the rest of the world that you are a Christian, that you believe in Jesus and that you believe um, in his living presence in the Blessed Sacrament in the church. So that also has a witnessing value. So now do not be ashamed to witness to Christ. That's very important. St. Paul would tell Timothy, my son, do not be ashamed to bear witness to Christ. So. Brothers and sisters, publicly practicing our faith has nothing to do with a show off. It is our obligation. In fact, that needs humility to do that. If you think that you are becoming, someone is publicly practicing his or her faith by going to church, um, is showing up, you need to know that a person who wants to show up will not be going to church. A person who wants to show up will be going somewhere else. But it, in our times, especially, it needs a lot of humility to go to church. You know, so that's what is found in today's humble believers those, for those who go to church. Therefore, do not be discouraged and um, do not think twice about your commitment to 
the church and worship and the sacraments. Now, going to church also is the fulfillment of your of the third commandment. Thou shalt keep the Lord's day and keep it holy. And for how do we honor the Lord's day? Just as the Acts of the Apostles would um, tell us about the early believers that they met regularly on the first day of the week. So after the resurrection of Christ, the day of worship was changed to the first day of the week, which is Sunday. So Acts of the Apostles give several examples coming together on a Sunday together. So that coming together was uh, also their fulfillment of the third commandment, thou shalt honor the Lord's day and keep it holy. So it is by going to um, church that we are keeping that commandment mostly. That's why the church has that Sunday obligation. Yes, I'm coming to that. That's the precept of the church. That we need to be going to church on a Sunday at least. So we have that Sunday obligation, knowing that this is very much connected to the third commandment. The church has given us that precept of uh, going to church at least on a Sunday and other days of obligation. So why go to church? I know it's simple. Um, it's answer is, um, and it is uh, a simple answer to that question. For these reasons, we go to church. Now, if I um, want to encourage people who are struggling with these questions, I probably will show you a small portion from the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter um, 3. There is a uh, confusion among the believers, the practicing people. You know, someone put this question, why should we do all these devotions? Because we look at the world and we see those who don't practice any of this, they prosper. Nothing happens to us. So um, I think if you are discouraged in any way, in this sense, you have a good news in the Old Testament. We are reading from Malachi chapter 3, verse 13 onwards. You have spoken harsh words against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. What will we profit by keeping his commandment or by, or by going about as monarchs before the Lord of hosts? Now we count the arrogant happy. Evil doers not only prosper, but when they put God to the test, they escape. So people have that question, the common question being spoken about a lot of times. Those who don't go to church, they prosper. They get money. Now, what is God's answer? Verse 16. Then those who revered the Lord spoke with one another. So that's the conversation. The Lord took not and listened. And a book of remembrance was written before him of, all, of those who revered the Lord and thought on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, my special possession on the day when I act, and I will spare them as parents spare their children who serve them. The Lord said, Your reward is not on this earth. On the day when I act, you will become my special possession. Because on this earth you honored me. And I will spare you. I will not punish you on that day. And then verse 18 says, Then once more you will see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. So the real difference between those who honor and serve God is um, made clear on the day of judgment. So keeping that in mind, need to know that we should never be discouraged. Now, the book of Hebrews would say, do not neglect to meet one another. On the other hand, when that day approaches, your day of meeting comes, encourage one another. Encourage yourself and the whole family. That day is approaching when we are coming together to worship. So that's what we should be doing in our times. So my brothers and sisters, these times when 
uh, going to church was impossible for some of us. We all have suffered as a result of it. Now, thank God, gradually uh, we are able to get back to uh, church services and worship. So go back with that um, enthusiasm to witness to the Lord, to enter into a public worship as is customary to God's people and also as fulfillment of the third commandment of God, go to church and uh, do your obligation there. So that's what I want to talk about this topic, why go to church. So you hope you understand that my perspective is, um, is to answer those people. I can keep my devotion personal and to myself. Nobody needs to know about it. Therefore, I don't go to church. Now that argument is not doing any favor to your faith. That's not what Jesus taught us. That's not what Jesus did either. He also had public worship. Holy family had it, apostles had it. That's the example we are called upon to follow. So I hope this session helped you in clarifying a few doubts from your heart and to encourage you in your journey as Catholics and Christians to join yourself with that faith practicing community. Now, um, I hope to come back to you with, uh, with other questions of other wise. Um, for some time on every Monday evening. So if you have any whys to be answered, you feel free to email us. We are cpeople.gmail.com. That's the email address. If you have any feedback as well, you can share with us. So we would like to be in dialogue with all of you. But thanks for listening. Um, God bless you all.